After World War II, the development of anti-aircraft guns fell into a state of confusion. Many people believed that the role of anti-aircraft guns had become very limited in the face of jet fighters. However, with the assistance of radar guidance technology, anti-aircraft guns not only did not fade into history, but instead forged a new path and became even more dangerous. In the 1960s, the United States began using the M163 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, which was equipped with a 20mm Gatling gun and modified from the M113 armored vehicle. This weapon performed well in the Vietnam War, although it rarely carried out anti-aircraft combat missions. After the Vietnam War, mobile anti-aircraft guns had already gained recognition, and no one doubted the effectiveness of this weapon. However, people began to discuss the direction of future design work. In the 1980s, a design company showcased a highly mobile-wheeled anti-aircraft weapon to the U.S. Army. This weapon can be seen as an upgraded version of the M163. At that time, the company had already developed an 8x8 wheeled chassis, which was a compact structure. Based on this, the company proposed various concepts for military vehicles. Among these concepts, the self-propelled anti-aircraft version was called Excalibur, and a prototype was also produced. Let's first talk about the chassis itself. It is similar to the wheeled flatbed trucks used by many airborne units, but slightly larger in size. The wheels use a unique independent swing arm suspension, which is very rare. The chassis is powered by a 135 horsepower Detroit V8 diesel engine. Although the power may seem insufficient, the chassis itself is lightweight. Even the overall weight of Excalibur is only a little over 7 tons, allowing it to reach a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour. The overall structure of Excalibur is very simple. It doesn't even have an enclosed driver's cabin. The driver sits directly in the front left position of the vehicle. There is no armor protection to speak of, and speed is its life-saving weapon. Its armament is a rotating turret mounted on the rear platform of the vehicle. The relevant technology is inherited from the M163. There is a gunner's position in the middle of the turret, and the turret is equipped with an M168 six-barrel 20mm Gatling gun. The turret uses radar-assisted target acquisition and engages in attacks. During air combat, the vehicle needs to deploy hydraulic support legs on both sides of the body to stabilize the platform. Strictly speaking, Excalibur is a mobile anti-aircraft gun platform with lightweight and highly mobile characteristics. It can operate independently and can be transported by general medium-sized transport aircraft. It can be rapidly deployed overseas and serve as a field air defense weapon. Its main concept is to be affordable and convenient. The unique chassis and lightweight structure also give it similar mobility to tracked vehicles. The downside is the lack of protection and the absence of self-defense weapon configurations, the driver and others can carry light weapons. The design of Excalibur seems to have no major problems, at least in terms of technology, there are no defects. Whether it is the chassis or the turret, they are mature technologies. However, there were problems with the design concept. Although this mobile low-altitude air defense weapon is not as expensive as tanks, it is still not cheap. It is obviously unwise to expose such valuable equipment to enemy light weapons, especially in slightly complex terrain. The battle between anti-aircraft guns and enemy helicopters is almost a close-quarters combat, relying on who reacts faster and can take more hits. If one can survive the first round of firepower output, it is very likely to deliver a fatal blow to the opponent. In addition to the design concept issues, the U.S. Army was also in a phase of downsizing at the time, and many costly projects were cut. Combined with other reasons, many wheeled transport vehicle projects were terminated, and Excalibur remained only as a single prototype, with no further development afterwards.